Now, if you've ever wanted to record your vocals and an instrument, a guitar or a keyboard, at the same time into GarageBand on your iPhone, today I'm gonna to be showing you how we can do multi-track recording in GarageBand. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, let's go through the equipment that we'll need to record. The first and most important factor is to have an interface such as this one. This is the Steinberg UR12. And as you can see, it has a microphone and an instrument input. We need a microphone. I've got just a, an SM57 here, a nice dynamic microphone. I've got a microphone stand here and a pop filter, an XLR cable, which we're gonna hook up this into the XLR input, an instrument cable. So this is a standard guitar cable, just a quarter inch jack. And the other end of this is going to go, not surprisingly, into our instrument. We need a USB, a to B cable and our trusty lightning to USB adapter, which we'll plug into the end of the cable. Put this one into our interface and the other end is gonna go into our phone. A power source, so I'm just using this uh, portable battery that has a micro USB cable built right into it. So, so we have power, the USB signal is gonna connect. We're ready to go. The one final thing I have here is a pair of headphones. And these are technically optional, but you'll really want these to plug in and be able to monitor the audio levels as you're recording. Okay, so we've now got our two inputs plugged in to our XLR and our instrument cable. It's now time to set up here in GarageBand to do multi-track recording from these two input sources. So I've disconnected the cable for now because I just wanna show what happens when we get this set up and plug it back in. So I'm gonna to go to add and create new song. And I'm gonna first do the voice track. So I'm gonna tap on voice here. What I'm going to do is plug in to here and turn the power back on, which is gonna power up the audio interface. And it's gonna get a USB connection there. It will now tell me that I've connected an audio device. It's gonna ask me if I want to turn on monitoring, which I will do so that I can hear the playback come back through the uh, headphones. Now I'm quickly just going to change one thing here. These lead vocals that it defaults to have a lot of delay and they're actually really hard to record. So you either wanna make this clean by going to fun, funnily enough, and clean, or a good sort of in-between. I use this punchy presence quite often. So that's now set up for the first vocal. But if we go to our track, we've only got the one track set up. So what we need to do is actually add the guitar track so that we can have the two tracks at the same time. So we'll go back in here, audio recorder again, we'll tap on instrument this time, and it will default to the nice room acoustic guitar, which we will leave on for now just for this recording. Again, you can make that clean or you could try one of the others if it's gonna sound better for your recording. We'll hit done. And now when we go back to our track, we have two tracks here, but there's one more thing that we need to do. We'll tap back on the little microphone icon and come back to here. Down the bottom here, we have channel one. And what we actually need to do is tap on that and select input two, and it changes to channel number two. If we do the same, so if we go back to our track and go to our microphone and do this again, that is on channel one. So the channel one, which is the XLR input on my interface is set for the microphone input. And channel two, which is the instrument cable that I'm gonna plug into my guitar, is going to accept the instrument signal from channel two. So there's one more thing that we need to do here before we start recording. What we need to do is slide out this slider, slide that one out, and actually record enable both of these tracks and make sure that monitoring is on. So you can see there that we've got the record light on for both, we've got monitoring on for both, and you can see our microphone and our guitar. So now when we hit record, and you can, you can barely make it out, but there's a little number two inside that red record button. So when we hit that record, it's now going to record those two tracks and record them simultaneously. So there's my vocal through the microphone and there is the guitar. So let's hit record and do a bit of a demo. Well, there's just one thing that you should know about me And that's that I don't like people who don't like people too much And some may say that it's really okay 
Maybe some folks are just born that way. There we go. So we've stopped the recording now. Let's hit play and have a listen. Well, there's just one thing that you should know about me, and that's that I don't like people who don't like people too much. So there you go. We have the two tracks recorded. We can play those back together, and it's a very convenient way to get a vocal and a guitar track down. Now, the additional benefit, which you're probably already ahead of me on here, is that we actually now have two individual separate tracks. So if we first disable the recording, while they're both enabled, we won't be able to select individual tracks. We can actually solo and mute these tracks. So if I just start playing again and solo just the microphone, you'll hear this. But every choice and decision we make is an opportunity. So you can hear that there's some bleed in there because the microphone is picking up the guitar, but because the guitar is using a direct input into the interface, if we play just the guitar, we swap that around, solo the guitar and hit play. So there you go, a very quick and simple explanation, hopefully, of how you can do multi-track recording on GarageBand on iPhone. So if you're a guitarist or a keyboard player or use any instrument and you tend to sing better when you play or play better when you sing, you can now record both of those instruments onto independent tracks in GarageBand.